which of the following statements is most accurate about the indifference curve now an indifference curve represents the plot of combination of risk and return for which an investor is indifferent so let us represent the risk by the standard deviation of return on the x axis and the return on the y axis so an indifference curve will look something like this the utility function of the investor is same along the indifference curve so if let's say this point is represented by r1 comma sigma 1 this point is represented by r2 comma sigma 2 it means that if the if the risk increases from sigma 1 to sigma 2 then the investor is indifferent if the returns increases from r1 to r2 means he is indifferent between choosing this both these points both these point represent the same utility function for the investor now a particular characteristic of the indifference curve is that they do not intersect with each other the indifference curve are parallel to each other for let us look at the first option for a risk averse person the indifference curve is flatter now this statement is incorrect because the risk averse person for a risk averse person more return should be given per unit of extra risk which he is taking so in this case the the uh, the indifference curve should be steeper the let, let us look at the second option the investors expected utility may be different along the indifference curve now this is incorrect because i told the various combinations of the risk as well as the standard deviation represents the same utility for an investor provided it is on it is lying on a single indifference curve however if you look between l1 l2 and l3 an investor will prefer points on l3 because for the same risk he is getting more return on l3 as compared to l2 and l1 and the third option says that the indifference curve do not intersect with each other now this statement is correct because i already told you that indifference curve do not intersect with each other let us try to find the reason why it doesn't intersect with each other suppose we have a indifference curve like this and we have another indifference curve like this so let's say this is sigma 1 and this is r1 and this is r2 on this point and let this point be represented by sigma 2 comma r3 so since this point and this point are lying on the indifference curve l1 and hence the investor is indifferent between sigma 1 r1 and sigma 2 r3 similarly this point and this point lies on the indifference curve l2 hence according to the de uh, definition of the indifference curve an investor will be indifferent between sigma 2 r2 sigma 1 r2 that is this point and sigma 2 r3 so it means that the investor will be indifferent between sigma 1 r1 and sigma 1 r2 but it cannot be the case because for the same risk he is getting more return r2 as per the second indifference curve so he cannot remain indifferent between the these two points because for the same kind of standard deviation he is getting higher return in one case and lower return in the other case so it runs against the assumption of the indifference curve and hence we say that l1 and l2 can never intersect with each other so the indifference curves do not intersect with each other the correct option is option c